Hey guys, have you ever wondered if the Bible was true? Have you ever wondered if your favorite story was true? If so, come along with me as we journey through time and we learn what the people before us, the archaeologists, the researchers, have done and dug up in the Holy Land to prove that the Bible is true. Hey guys, welcome to the first of three videos. This is something I've never done, but this is something that I feel God has laid on my heart. Like when I, my introduction is, we're going to go back in time. We're going to study some of the archaeology that has been found in the Holy Land. Now I'm going to reference many, many things. And I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And that's down in the description. Every bit of the information I use will be down in the description for you to click the link and go see it yourself. Some of the pictures I will be putting in the corner here. <clears throat> be sure you may have to pause to read. But I'm going to read every word that they say. I'm not going to skip anything. Again, these pictures or these passages taken from books and stuff like that will be mentioned in the description. The credit will be given. So, <clears throat> what I want to start with is this guy named Stuart McAllister. In 1902, he done a discovery that he believed was the, called the High Place of Gezer. Now, <clears throat> and that's High Place of Gezer. Gezer is situated in Israel, or Jerusalem, not just Israel, the whole city. It's between Tel Aviv, modern day Tel Aviv, and Jerusalem. And Gezer, if you look at this video, this picture I got right up here in the corner, it's going to show where Gezer was. And if you'll notice the trade route to a place called Jericho. Now we're not going to get a whole lot into Jericho but there's some things that happen in Jericho as well and I will read reference those as we go. Now if you look south of Jericho you'll see the Dead Sea. As we know the Dead Sea was a was a ground, a stomping ground to a lot of abominations. And that part will be in my second video. Jericho will be the second video, and we're at the Dead Sea will be in the third video. But I will touch on all of those in every video. So, let's get started with Stuart McAllister. Now, his book, Bible Side Lots, is based on his information. And you'll find most of the information I'm talking about in Chapter 3. The download link for his whole book will be in the description. I would recommend to download it because it has several things in it. But I'm going to be going from chapter 3 in this book. It's called The Iniquity of the Amorites. Now if we go to the Bible, and we go to Numbers 13, chapter 13, verse 29, and we're going to, this is where my basis is going to come from. It says, The Am Amorites dwell in the land of the, to the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Now, I want to pay particular mention to the Amorites, the Jebusites and the Hittites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. Now, the high place of Gezer, which I'm going to show you a picture of right now, it consists of a bunch of stones and it's square looking concrete thing. Now, first excerpt I want to read from Bible Side Lies comes from page 71. Now if you have a PDF reader, if don't go by the page number over here. Go look at the page on the in the PDF reader, the reader of the book if you download it. This is going to be page 71 and it's going to be, the excerpt going to be right here. You can read along with me. And this is what he described as he seen. He said there was a bell shaped pit resembling an ordinary cistern. Now, a cistern is something they dug to put water and stuff in. A little to the east of the sacred cave, and apparently a little outside the temple precinct, in this pit was found a great number of bones of human beings. Cows, sheep, goat, and deer in a confused heap. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm not sure what he means by confused, but a heap, I guess, is a bunch of people. We all know a heap is like a big pile. It would be confusing to me if I went up on it. I'd be like, why is that there? 
It would be cows, sheep, goats, and deer in a few teeth. In all probability, this was the receptacle into which the refuge from sacrifice, the leftovers from sacrifice, was cast. Such a receptacle was a necessary necessity wherever victims are sacrificed in worship. Now, I'm going to go directly to page 73, and that will be now in the top of your screen. There remains a sacrifice of children of which a few words must be said. All around the feet of the columns, now over here I'm going to put the columns. All around the feet of the column, over the whole area of the high place, the earth was discovered to be a regular cemetery in which the skeletons of young infants were buried. These infants were never, and that ends that page, and let's go to page 74, more than a week old. They were deposited in large jars, which I'm going to show you right here. No, oh, sorry, they were able to be right here. And with them were placed small jars, possibly for food, for the use of the little victims in other worlds. You know, back then they believed, like the Egyptians, and that's where I believe they get this from, the Egyptians, uh, they would always put stuff in the tombs, you know, that people would have in the afterlife. And they believed the little victims in the other world, they needed some food. So we know they're not sending them to God, because we know God don't need no food. Two at least of the skeletons showed marks of fire. Okay, I'm going to stop right there just for a second. Now, I want to go to another scripture. I want you to turn your Bibles with me, if you have it, to Leviticus 18.21. Leviticus 18.21. And he's talking about stuff, this is God talking about stuff you don't need to do. He says, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shall thy profane name the, profane the name of the Lord. I am the Lord. Now, if you look in the in the somewhere, you will see a hand drawn picture of what appears to be a serpent. Now this was found at the high place of Gezer. Well, this is based on history. This is what the Amorites considered as Molech. He was the king of the of the Amorite gods. And what God's saying, y'all shall not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Now, let's look what he says. It says, Two at least of the skeletons show marks of fire. Now, we're going to go and we're going to get another, if that's not enough scripture for you, we're going to go to Luke, stay in Leviticus. Let's go over to 20. Now, this is going to be a long read. Now, I'm going to start at chapter 2. So, let's read this whole scripture. Thou shalt, again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever be the, of the children of Israel, or the stranger that sojourn, that comes, the stranger that comes, in Israel, that gives any of his seed in the Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of this land shall stone him with stones. Well, you might say that's the old law, but there's still things in the old law that matter. Stuff, old stuff that matter, not law, the old stuff that matter. He says right here, if you give your children to Molech, you'll be stoned to death. So, Molech, and let's get this clear, there's only, Molech was a snake, it was a serpent. And you'll see, like I said, you'll see the picture. And uh, <clears throat> we look back in Genesis and we see this same serpent. You get the picture of who that is. It's Satan. And he says, you give your children to Molech, you will be stoned to death. You, if you, basically, if you kill these children, you will be stoned to death. And I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuaries and to profane my holy name. And if people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from this man, when he giveth of his seed in the Molech, and kill him not, then will I set my face against that man and against his family, and will cut him off with him. And all that go a whoring after him, to commit weardom with Molech from among their people. Whoredom with Molech, pardon me. From among other people. So he's saying right here, if you give your children a Molech, I will you'll be stoned to death. He will put his face against you. He will cut you off from among the people. That's what he's telling about. I'll cut you off from among the people. You will not you will not 
do anything. I will cut you off. And if anybody in the land sees you do this and they don't stone you to death, they're going to be in trouble. So, do we have the spirit of Molech now when it comes to abortion? We can argue, well, that's fire. He's talking about fire. But you're giving God, you're giving these children away. Now, when we go back, these children are not only a week old. Now he says, show marks of fire. He, but we're going to put this back up. We'll show marks of fire. We have here evidence of the widespread custom of devoting the firstborn, a part of the practice, or the first fruits of man. Now let's go to page 56, right up here. Embedded, embedded in this east bank were a number of human skulls, much injured and broken. The rest of the bodies were not to be found. It is not impossible that this bank was actually the earthen altar of the high place of Gezer. That was his conclusion. Well, he's not the only one. Now, remember I talked earlier about Jericho. Well, Kathleen Kenya... She wrote a book called Digging Up er Jericho and her excavation from 1952 to 1956. The published date was 1957, her book, Digging Up Jericho. She wrote, there is a, here, here, I'm going to put this up here. There is an unpleasant suggestion of the infant sacrifice based on complete infant burial, a collection of infant skulls with the neck vertebrae attached, showing that the heads were cut off and not merely collected from burial. Now, what she means collected from burial, if you look up here, there's a picture of this thing called an ossuary. An ossuary, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. But when, back in the day when they had these tombs, most of, most of the tombs were family tombs. Where people, whole family used those. Unless you were king or, or Jesus, it was a family tomb. So, after someone was dead for a little over a year, they would use these ossuary boxes because all the flesh and, and all that stuff was gone. They would take the bones and put them inside the ossuary box and then put them to the side for the next person passed away. Now, that's what she meant. It was not merely collected for burial. The heads were cut off. The heads were cut off. This is the same resemblance to both of these places. Now, if we go to let's go to Deuteronomy 12 let's go to Deuteronomy 12 and this is uh, again this is what God's saying to them he's saying you know even back then this is before it all happened he says in Deuteronomy 12 we're going to start with verse 1 and go to verse 4 and it says these are the statutes and judgments which you shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God thy Father giveth to possess and the days that you live in upon the earth. He's talking to the Israelites. He's telling them what they should do. He says, You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them on that place. You shall not do so unto the Lord your God. He's saying you should destroy everything. Go through there. Destroy everything. And also, let's go to Deuteronomy, that same chapter, chapter 12, and we'll start at verse 30. It says, hey, take heed to thyself that thou be not snored by following them, snared by them that follow after they be destroyed. Don't follow them after you destroy them from before thee. And that thou inquire not after their God, saying, How did these nations serve their God? Even so will I do likewise. He's telling the Israelites, don't do what they do. Don't be marveled. Don't be snared by them. Don't get in their trap. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination, there's that word again, to the Lord which he hath, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What things soever I command you, 
observe to do it. Thou shalt not add therein, nor diminish from it. He's saying, don't do what their gods do. Now, we talk about the fire. Again, there's that fire and abomination. Fire, when they burn their kids, the fire, it says, we've, I've done red. It said, Molech, you put your kid, you give your seed to Molech. And he puts it in the fire. Now, let's go to, let's, let's, uh, let's stay in Deuteronomy. Let's go to chapter 18. And, and we're going to go 18 and start uh, verse 9 and go to verse 12. He says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of these nations. There's that abomination again. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Fire. Molech. Or that uses the divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Now, these days when we think about a witch, we think about TV, you know, Bewitched. I loved it when I was growing up. I was a little kid and I loved Bewitched. I dreamed of Genie, which is not a witch, but it has witchcraft. Uh, something more recent, Charm, Harry Potter, uh, Wizards of Waverly Place on Disney. My children watched it when, when, when they were growing up. But it's it's a I know it's a TV. I know it's a TV show and these people are faking. But this stuff is real. It says right here in the Bible. It says, or a charmer, a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. And he's talking about somebody who does these wakes that try to call people from the dead. I forget what the word is, but at least that's bear with me on that. Or a wizard or a necromancer. Now, a necromancer has to do with the dead. When the dead are dead, they're dead. When the body's from the soul, the body's dead. The soul's the only thing that lives. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. He's talking to the he's talking to the Israelites. He says, uh, talking about the Levites and the Levites' inheritance, which is Hebrew. That's the Israelites that were freed from Pharaoh. They were Hebrews. They were Levites. Levites. Hebrews, same thing. He tells them not what not to do, what not to mess with. So there's going to be some pictures that go around. And uh, up here, but I want to read one more scripture, and I want to go to Exodus 23:24, and this is God talking to Moses. He says, uh, "Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt early overthrow them and quit quite break down their image." Now, images in the Hebrew. I can't pronounce the word, the Hebrew word, but it means it means pillars. Break down their pillars. So again, he says, and we go reading chapter verse 23, it says, For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee into unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Persites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. These people were a part of the Nephilim. They were part of the Nephilim. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And we'll get more into that as we go forward into more videos. But they will be, like I said, there will be several bit pictures. She's probably coming up in the thing. And uh, there was one picture that that Mr. Stewart is in Mr. Stewart's book. It shows, and now I'll put it up here, somewhere up here. It shows a little six to eight year old girl that was cut asunder. She was cut in half. Now, why would you cut a kid in half? They had saw marks. It showed the saw marks. Why would you cut a kid in half? A young child, why would you cut it in half? Now, I, 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 Bible Expedition is a YouTube channel. I'm going to link him down in the description. And, uh,. This is where I find a lot of my information out. I use a lot of his information. But he, he can tell you more about this than I can. He's, a, he's, an, he's an archaeologist himself. When it comes to the archaeology side of it, 
he can tell, he, he, you will understand more from what he says. I'm just trying to give you a basis right now in this video. I'm trying to give you a lay a foundation for my next video. But there's a map that I couldn't find that was drew was drew during Stuart McAllister's expedition of this, and it showed where each one of these jars that were sacrificed. And again, I'll show it again up here. Where these children were sacrificed and burnt, they were ten of them. They were scattered all around the pillars. Now. There's, they put a placard up there in Israel, and they said this is where the Allies met. Back in the day, they did their sacrifices for their sheep and goats and stuff like that. Well, if this is where that kind of stuff happened, why would they be infants? And, and the guy who was there in 1902, Stuart says, they were, more, they were not more than a week old. Infants in jars. Some of them show signs of burns. They were in jars. Infants no more than a week old. And they were confused heaps. He said, he said, the number of bones of the human beings, they were cows, sheep, goats, and deer, in a confused heap. In all probability, this was a receptacle into which the refuse, the waste from sacrifices was cast. This is an abomination unto God. You didn't, they didn't sacrifice humans to God. You didn't sacrifice babies to God. That was to Molech. Now, again, you will see Molech here. Now, over here, I'm going to put Bethlehem. Now, this is a satanic temple uh, image now they use. And this is a snake, which was used back in those days to signify Molech. Well, over the years, these different gods, have their images have changed. These different things they worship... When I say God, I mean little G's. They have changed. Their images, their structure has changed. If you go back as far as Egyptians, Aquan Ra. Ra, the sun god. That's the devil. That's Satan. These different gods were crazy. I was telling my wife, we were talking about, we watched a video actually on the Egyptian gods. And these Egyptian gods, that they called gods, they died. They were fighting against each other. I mean, one of them, I can't remember what his name was, but they tricked him to get him to a box. They threw him into the Nile, and he died. Now, the difference between all of their gods, my God died. Yes, he did. My Savior died. But he rose on the third day. He didn't stand the ground. You won't find his bones. You won't find his remains. You won't find a tomb where he was at, where he's at. Archaeology has dug all over Jerusalem and they have never found bones. Some people have tried to make lies that they have found Jesus' bones, but it's a lie from the pits of hell. In today's society, abortion is a common thing. People use abortion as a common thing. My wife was telling me, she read somewhere yesterday that the satanic temple are trying to make abortion part of their religion so people can do it on the basis of religion now when you got the devil saying we, you can do it under the basis of religion what does that tell you? that tells you you're giving your children to Molech and God says don't do that or they stone you to death and he'll turn his face against you so thank you for joining me in this video uh, like and subscribe for more of it. Uh, this is my first video doing this kind of stuff. And I hope to get better and be more able to present stuff better in the next video. Uh, but I hope the Lord keeps you and I hope you found some information in this video more knowledgeable and it helped you. Uh, and it'll be probably about a week, week and a half for the next video. So you guys have a blessed day. Thank you.